you watching Vinland Saga? Yeah, I actually am. I, I've been I've been enjoying it. And yeah. I, I still prefer the first season, but second season it's getting there now. Yeah, I didn't really like how every episode what well, nothing was happening until the very end. Yeah, it was and like, like nine episodes, bro. I was like, motherfucker, you literally <laughs> built me up. This whole episode was the slowest build for the most semi exciting thing. And then the next episode, it was the same thing over and over and over. Like, bro, they're just, they have this formula going on right now. I don't know what they're doing, but now it's just making me want something to happen. And then as it's picked. That's what, dude, that's what I was saying. Like with Vinland Saga is the only anime that can have an episode called War on Kettle's Farm and it show no war in the whole yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah. They were literally just hanging out. No, but Vinland, I don't know this. I know that everyone probably prefers the first season but there's something about this season that makes you appreciate Thorfinn a lot more because like yeah. he he sees like his wrongs that he's done and then like how all the dead bodies that he's killed are holding him down it's like weight it's weight that's holding him down it's all that guilt it's the guilt that's holding him down but it's shown to us as the viewer as these characters that are still alive within him and that's why he said, I vow not to kill anyone because I'm going to be living for y you all and everyone. Yeah, and I love that he's actually strong enough to say something like that, but then also, like, use attack to disable and disarm people instead of just murking them, like, even though he easily could smoke everybody on the farm if he wanted to. I think it was, like, three weeks ago um, when uh, I made it to the episode, and I was like, bro, I cannot wait anymore. I, I literally have to go... So, like, I finished the episode around 11, and then what happened was I read the manga till, like, 3 a.m., and I made it pretty far, <laughs> like, so compared to where I was. And I was like, yo, this, what I'm into right now, like, as in the manga, I'm probably not going to see for another two years animated, which is crazy to even think. Yeah, I, I hope that there was a long break between season one and season two, and I really hope that they don't do that again. Like, I, we could get season three next year. I'd be completely fine with that. I it might just also depend on like the viewership and the demand after this season, which might not be the most demanding, yeah, the most hype. But everyone swears. I actually we started collecting the collector's edition manga. We have the first two of them, so I'm reading through it now. But the first two books only cover like barely season one. So, um, yeah, yeah, I got a little bit of ways to go. But we're gonna get started with the the peak anime. The reason why we're here. What yeah. is up, everyone? Welcome to the summit. We have a special guest, special episode, Sansa Wano episode. As you guys know, whenever someone gets caught up, we have to have them on to talk about it. We have a special guest, Mowgli. Uh, how are you doing, bro? Welcome to the stream. Doing good. Just hanging out. It's early in the morning on my end. Not early, too early, but it's good enough. It's 11 here, and that's still too early for me, honestly. Um, So, Manuel Herrera. Did I say that right? 100% right? Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. Um. For everyone that doesn't know him, he's a professional skateboarder uh, slash One Piece enjoyer. And obviously, you guys know anything One Piece has to be done here at the Summit. Um, I've noticed, I've been watching, he's a part of Braille Skate Team, professional skateboard for Braille Skate Team. Uh, is there any other, like, uh, teams or anything you work with? Um, This pant company, Johnny Geiger Rides for Riders Culture. Okay. Uh, and then Footprint Insul just started sending me shoes so that's pretty cool Hell yeah let's go that's awesome you got the one piece they even got the one piece skateboard too i, I watched that that video on youtube and those bro. boards are fucking amazing bro i know i'm about to have a room fixed up in like three weeks or four and i'm about to go crazy with the decorating and i'm gonna have that board up so i'm excited for that i will say on on stream uh it's sad and I don't want this to happen, but it might happen. Primitive will probably do a One Piece collab in the future, which I don't want them to because they already did Naruto. They already <laughs> did Demon Slayer. They already did Dragon Ball Z. And I'm anticipating it, and I don't want them to do it. I just don't want them to. I feel you 100% because that's how I feel about Fortnite. I do not want Fortnite to get One Piece. I'm so yeah. worried about it. Yeah, cause, but I get it. It's like introduction to skateboarding or like people that love anime could get into it or collect it. But yeah. it, I just don't want that to happen, but it might happen. And I, I, once again, if it doesn't happen, then that's cool. But also, it's just like me being a gatekeepy fan. Like, I've been <laughs> part of it for so long. I'm part of that, too. When did you start watching? Uh, So, 
I don't know if you remember before cable, it was channel 58, four kids. Yeah, four kids. You started with four yeah. kids, one piece. <laughs> it was the worst. Yeah, and it was the worst thing because, like, their voices, at, like, the dub was the worst thing ever. Sanji had, like, a lollipop yeah. instead of a cigarette. And it's just, like, I think I watched maybe, like, two episodes, and then it never showed on four kids again. But it always stuck with me, like, this and this show about pirates. I always thought about it. And the craziest part is, like, they were in Logetown before they went into the Grand Line. That was the episode I saw where they were just exploring the town yeah. before they, they went into the Grand Line. And I always thought, I need to watch this. Like, this is something that, I, like, I don't know what it was. It was, like, drawing me in. I don't know the why Oda for what. And it was just calling me. And then years later, I had, like, an infinite amount of, like, time to just kind of, like, do anything. So I told myself, ah, I think... I think I'm going to watch that show. And I like typed in, uh, I, I, I remembered it was one piece, but I still typed in like pirates, a uh, cartoon or like, cause like I did at the time I didn't know it was anime. Yeah. Like it's on four kids. So you don't, you don't really think that it's going to be an anime. Right. So I typed that in and I was like one piece. All right, cool. I think that's what it was. And then I was like, Oh, that's Luffy. Yeah, that's it. Cause like, I remember his face and like his whole character design. So and I knew it was a show I was interested in because, like, in 2008 or nine, I – this is when YouTube was just getting hot, too. Yeah. Uh, I remember entering, like, the thing, and it, sh it gave me the biggest spoiler. Uh, <laughs> so, what did it show you at first? <laughs> Ace dying. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, and it's, it literally said, Luffy reacts to Ace dying. And I was like, okay. That, that's the time like I didn't – that's all it was. That's what back in the day, like what early anime on YouTube, like you could never find, like we were so far behind over here in the States. Like I remember watching like old Naruto. The only thing I could find was Naruto versus Sasuke, like their, their fight in the Valley. Like you couldn't find anything but spoilers. Like that's all there was that was posted. So I yeah. definitely feel that. I do remember in high school, uh, the hardest thing at the time was whenever, uh, uh, Naruto Shippuden, Naruto went into, uh, his, uh tail beast form like the first two or three and it's just him in like the red and black yeah and going against orochimaru that was like the first one like oh like dang why is this the most popular thing on here <laughs> it's crazy that was like oh, damn yeah i know that this is like early ship it in like right after yeah um, so what was your what was your first like anime what was it that four kids interaction with one piece uh, um not nah, dragon ball it was uh dragon ball z i remember like i was like probably five and I would always rush home to watch it. Yeah. And it, it'd be like, now looking back at it, it's like, there's just, it was a lot of non talking and just like kind of looking at each other. And you're just like, you're anticipating the movement. Yeah. Which is, which is <laughs> that was so, we were so about that though back in the day. Like, we, that was the shit back then. And then you actually see like newer shit, like fighting, like Naruto level fight, fight choreography or like One Piece impact and story. Player, yeah. yeah. Demon Slayer will, animation, yeah. I will say Demon Slayer, I appreciate them for fucking, like, doing it. Like, there's no, like, filler. There's no anything. Casey, it's literally like, just... Kendra gets, like, two days to chill. That's it. And then it's back to war. Like, he gets, like, no time at all in between these missions. <laughs> yeah. So today is, like, a new episode of uh, Demon Slayer, which I'll be watching. And then tomorrow's Vinland Saga. So, like, I have, like, the animes I keep up with. Yeah. I mean, that, these animes make my days easier like i feel you 100 percent, bro that's it's, exactly it's the same way when you have a good season too where like everything's coming out like every day you have like at least one new anime to watch it's it's definitely good and we got jujutsu kaisen i don't know if you watch that that's coming out yeah. next month next I'm, month i'm so ready i i remember going to the theater last year by myself just to watch that yeah like, i didn't have no one to watch so good me. yeah it was so good like I, I was just like what the fuck i'm hyped and i was like <laughs> no one's around me really it's like the everyone's like just in their own separate groups i was like fuck this yeah, sucks see, like we we went and saw a uh, film red in theaters and that was one that i was like i was a little salty because me me and my wife went but the theater itself i wanted everyone to be so hyped for the movie and no one was hyped for the movie except us <laughs> but like you see like fan reactions and shit on youtube of like theaters just losing their fucking minds that's, I wanted that's that. what i wanted that's what i wanted to yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what i wanted i guess over here in the states it's not like that no I guess not. Never. So we are going to get started. Uh, you're going to go ahead and make your official tier list, which I'll send you once it's all done up and finished. 
Um, we have them in order here. All of the arcs that I felt like pretty much every arc I felt was important. The only one that's not really here is uh, the Logetown arc with uh, Plugy. Well, that's the most important one. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, I, well, it, you uh, the thing is with One Piece is you never know. Like we, everyone thought Skypea was nothing, and then now, are you manga current? Or no, just anime I current just, One Piece. I, at the moment, I'm like still on ten seventeen because. Uh, I made sure to, yeah, I know, I know, I la- I'm oh, lagging. But I, <laughs> uh, I told myself I wanted to binge, probably the, the dumbest thing I could have said, but I'll, I'll definitely be catching up pretty soon. Now, I'm gonna honestly, binge. now would be the perfect time, because by the time you get caught up, we'll have a very special episode in July. So I like, heard, and that's exactly why I need to catch up now. Yeah, now's like, the time. I just feel like I, I left myself this moment to not watch it every day, because I didn't want to go through the the Kaido like I knew this was it 1017 is like when they reanimated everything and they're like they made the special special episode and I was like you know what I'm leaving it here I'll be back yeah because like I know it's going to be such an important part so like whenever I first got into One Piece it's like really like I fucking binge the whole thing dude I'm talking when I'm talking about binge I was literally watching it for 11 hours straight every day and I caught up in less than a month and by the end of it I was like (laughs) At the end of it, I was at Dress Rosa, and I was like, "What do I do now? <laughs> every week?" You're like, "I gotta wait every every week now, bro." See, so when when I first started watching, um, I had watched all the way up t- to pre time skip Sabudi, so they had just mm-hmm. arrived Sabudi the first time, and then that was when I got hit with weeklies, and then I watched weekly up till Dress Rosa, and then that was when my wife started One Piece. So then I just went the whole way back. And I just paused at Dress Rosa and we watched it the whole way. We got caught up at Whole Cake together. And then now we've just been caught up together since then. But yeah, I've been hitting that to be continued since fucking pre time skip Saturday. And it's been brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. I just, I just remember catching up and I was like, man, what the fuck? I, I was like, I was like, yo, people don't fucking know this is the truth. This is literally yeah. the truth. They're like, they're throwing like some. <laughs> some crazy life shit at you there's racism in here there's inequality there's slavery there's like all oh, everything everything, everything. Look, look, like, as deep know. as you want to look as deep as you want to look is how great one piece is even if you just look at it at surface level it's still amazing but yeah it's like every part of it is done out so well yeah it, it, it's seriously the best like it's probably the best story out ever and like the fact that it's still going it's insane because like now you're just the commitment level it, it's, it's crazy that it's still going but it's still getting better like even the weekly chapters we're getting now bro like i promise you are like even on par or better with wano like it's oh it's been God. insane yeah so yeah. i don't know how he does it but i mean that's why i fucking i talk about him all the time that's why we do everything i don't, i know you don't know this but i make it a point to bring it up all the time we're actually certified straw hats this was sent to us which which camera what the is fuck? You? this camera One out is of you thousand? Yep, certified, certified Dude, certificate of our crew, signed it. I keep it framed over here on my desk. I'd keep that frame too. <laughs> this, this is the official Straw Hat podcast here. Um, but we're gonna get started with your opinions on Romance Dawn. What are you feeling, Romance Dawn? We got triple S because obviously, One Piece is, has S arcs. I should have double S in here, even too. Honestly, there's so many good arcs, but. Uh, romance Dawn, Luffy's childhood. Um, talking about like the also when it shows Luffy, Ace, and Sabo as kids. Yeah, and yeah, th- yeah, because that was like, still Romance Dawn. Yeah. Okay. Because like, uh, I didn't know if we were going by the beginning all the way to the whole thing. Then, how, um, as they're introduced as characters, bring them back. We're pretty, we're pretty relaxed here on this podcast. So, I mean. We'll just go all entirety. If it happened on ro- the island Romance Dawn, then we'll count it. Okay, okay. All right, so what are my thoughts? Yeah, where uh, Triple S through F, where are you feeling for uh, Romance Dawn on just overall, like you're enjoying your personal experience with the arc in One Piece? The arc? The arc. Oh, I thought you said the arc. <laughs> oh, yeah, that artwork was, that was like fucking 90s anime artwork, so. I know like it, trying to get people into it is like yo just been, just don't mind it it gets better yeah i just give everyone the option i there's an hd version there's a movie version and then there's the og episodes which one do you want to start with that's um, how i always do it so i think like it's interesting because you kind of have to 
enjoy the beginning before you get in because and I say that because the beginning's what draws you in and like there's something about like how it first starts off like and not, even to say before it starts off they give you like more about his childhood childhood before he got the devil fruit and with the devil fruit which is so sick he's like, and and I'm saying that because like I'm pulling that from his uh whenever he he's just crying his mm. brother is gone yeah and it's just like they give us those flashback memories which is I think the most important thing they could have done it gives us context like how and how he saw his brother what his brother meant to him and just not only that but it also gives us an, an introduction to sabo like before then we didn't even know who he was i was yeah. like and even then i was like yo who is this kid like is this kid important like i was like being judgmental when i first saw sabo because <laughs> you already, you already I, love ace so much you're like i don't know about this third one <laughs> yeah and then like then you learn everything that goes down and it's like it's insane to see that how even though luffy and ace were brothers it's just like they're, they really did have that brother bond like he they hated each other like luffy didn't hate him ace was more of like annoyed of, of luffy yeah luffy would not yeah. let them alone <laughs> exactly but like it's just so on par with the character that luffy is like who he is is just like that's what it was is like he just wants to be around you bro like just let your brother be around <laughs> you and and i think that like as a brother myself I, I feel i felt that and i connected with that so easily that i was like dude why is this giving me like the emotional vibes? Cause like he's no longer like you realize that he's no longer there yeah. and like he won't be there for him anymore. Ever. And that's what hits so, so, so much harder too. Even when you see Sabo mess around with the flare flare fruit, it just, it just like feels different even than when yeah. he's had it. Yeah, it does. Um, I, I really think it's an important start off. And I just said like, I bring the kid kid aspect before he's like, uh, what is he 17 whenever he sets out on an adventure mm. like is he 17 or 18 16. i think he's 16 okay so he's 16 when he sets off for his adventures and like at the time it, what is he like maybe 9 10 or 12 like yeah yeah where, when they first so when they first where, where we're seeing his youngest to where he's at and 16 is like you can see the development because they even show us him training with like the monkeys i'm like yo what this is crazy he's like, <laughs> just training with monkeys just literally just boxing in the woods with these giant fucking apes like yeah luffy was wild and his and garb just let him do whatever the garb yeah. was not a great grandpa i think <laughs> <laughs> but even then like i think everything that happened on the island was important it's so when he when i we are shown uh shanks and then he eats the fruit i think that right there just the comedy aspect of it because like his jaw drops and just like it just like, walking away and grab like, the arm it yeah just keeps and going like nothing's ha like it's like crazy because we are now just learning like i think it was like a few months ago we just learned that that fruit is probably the, one of the most important fruits yeah in it's the world like, yeah so now that we learned that that's one of the most important fruits and in the beginning as you like make it into a different arc, you're like, bro, why does our main character have the wackest like, uh, yeah, like rubber, bro? Yeah, yeah. All right. but then it works out. He finds a way to make it work always, and then especially always. when you see that first the gear two, you're like, all right, rubber's dope, bro. Cool rubber. Yeah, gear two hit different. <laughs> gear two hit different. When I seen that, I was just like, bro, okay, now we're getting somewhere. I was like, there's no, there's no way this guy could have made it any further without that. Um, I, yeah. I think Romance Sun is pretty high up there for me. Just because, like, it's it's the beginnings. And it's, like, it's so warm and it's so comical. Uh, it just, it keeps me around. It's not something that I wanted to skip. Like, uh, and even in the beginning, like, people could argue it's, like, just the smallest amount that you get. But it's more of, like, later on when you get more from that place and his uh, upbringing. Yeah. And it's also, like, one of three instances where you get to see Shanks do anything at all. So, also. That's true. So where, where where would you place it then? Triple S uh, to F. And we can move them around and stuff too if you want to switch them up then. So with the rankings, it's like either up there or low, right? Yeah. Triple S is the highest. And then triple F is the lowest? Just regular F. Just single F. <laughs> um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll say I'd give it A. A tier, all right. 
just because like it is important but like also it's not like the most action-packed and like if you try to describe romance dawn to someone they're gonna be like i don't know about this yeah um moving on to the next arc we got zoro luffy saves zoro meets kobe um you get zoro's base for the onigiri technique mm-hmm. so how are you feeling about that one where we where we kobe is iconic i love kobe so much personally i thought he was annoying at the beginning yeah. It wasn't until he like it, it wasn't until he, uh, he they showed the commitment of him going through the Marines. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think for me that's a solid like that's like a C. I I could have I could have you know it didn't drag on either, but like it's a C. Like yeah. it was not you get to see him fight and get Zoro and the crew, but it was it was a C. Yeah, I I don't even like uh, Kobe's friend uh, Helmeppo. Yeah, I hate him so much. He's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, moving to the next arc, we got Buggy's arc. The first time they meet, you got the iconic dog guarding mm-hmm. the dog food. Um, this one, I'm personally, honestly, not a fan of too much. But this one was like, this is the one that a lot of people quit One Piece on because they don't fuck with Buggy. And it's so early in One Piece. It's like literally the first like 15 episodes or 10 episodes even. I was going to say like, I'll give it a B just because like we see... This is like kind of when you see more of a group interaction, like yeah. slowly forming with Nami, Zoro, and Luffy. And then like just I don't know, that dog is like a thing that just keeps popping in my head. Like just that you know what dog I'm Yeah, I know about. exactly what dog you're talking about. <laughs> you know what, dude? That's a C. That's that's definitely a C. It's not a B. It's a C. I probably was overthinking that one. Yeah, it's a C. It's all right. Yeah, this it's the first time you do get to see the crew like how they'll you don't know at the time but you'll know like like they get trapped in fucking cages and shit and like they're just like fighting but they're also doing fuckery the whole entire time that they're also fighting the buggy pirates that's just kind of how the straw hats roll all throughout one piece um moving into syrup village we meet usab this was kind of annoying for me honestly (laughs) like just and i know it's important but it's just like I remember going through this. I'm like, bro, hurry up. Yeah, Usopp is the worst. Like, I, I he's all right now. He's a little useful now, but I really did not like early Usopp. All the lies. I was glad he got his girl, but I think he really should have just chilled on the island with his girl. And I, I don't think we're done seeing Kuro either. I think we might see Kuro again. You think so? Yeah, because there, there is, there's one mysterious frame in One Piece where. Captain Kuro is seen in a silhouette just on a ship again. He's a captain again, just sailing, looking at Luffy's wanted poster. And then they just never I, mention that shit again. They do too much of that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they do too much of, like, not mentioning a lot of things that, the, as a viewer, like, you got to understand, millions of people are, like, going through this story and, like, at least oops, a few thousand people are paying attention to, like, yo, what was that? Give yeah. us that. And well, that's the thing is, I, you just never know. He might come back. I I think we're definitely going to get another uh, war arc, and I think it's going to be a lot of returning people showing up. It's so going to be hype. Where would you uh, put Usab's arc? Where you a D. Boy? A D. That's just my experience, though. Like I was, tr- like uh, I was just trying to rush it, and if I'm trying to rush it, it's just like I just I'm not that I'm not enjoying it that much. I feel you. We do get the Mary though. Which is which is probably the only positive. I'd rather get the Mary than Usopp. Oh man, that just reminds me of like whenever they <laughs> ended, dude. I got emotional when that happened. Yeah, dude, I just watched it recently with my my cousin's watching One Piece for the first time right now, and he just saw the whole gear too. Every Sunday we have an anime party here. People come over and watch One Piece and Demon Slayer at the house, and um, yeah, we just last week watched uh, Gear Two versus Luchi. And the Mary showing up and everything. And it was emotional. It always yeah, is. That, yeah. Just a voice crying out. Oh, God. Um, we have a Barate arc next with, we got our boy Sanji showing up. That was hype. That was hype. That's yeah. like a, that's for sure up there. Like, I think that's an A. I think that's an A. Because like, not only do you see Sanji, but Mihawk pops up. Bro. Yeah. And just, and, and even Don Krieg is still like a pretty dope, um, like antagonist and you get to see like kind of the scale too because his ship is crazy compared to the brate or even any of the the sunny any of them 
But um, yeah, and I do appreciate Sanji's flashback a bit more than the previous people. So like, uh, just it's just yeah. overall a fully better story. Yeah, overall it's definitely better. Um, moving off of that, we go into Reverse Mountain, where we meet our boy, Laboon. No, Arlong. Is that after? Is Arlong and then yeah. Laboon? Okay, Arlong Park. Then we got next. Bro, Arlong. That's an that's S, yeah. Man. That's easy. Regular S or triple S? Regular S. Uh, regular all right, S. all right. We got regular S. Because I, I do remember feeling super hyped. Yeah. There's there's too much that happens there. There's too much. It's crazy that all this happens in the first like 25 episodes of one piece like all yeah. Arlong park is like 20 to 30 so it, yeah are you for, for, what are you hyped for the uh the adaptation uh, i'm i'm holding my breath i like the actors they all picked and i do i have faith in oda but there's so much wild shit they're gonna have to make look real with cgi i just don't know how I, i'm i'm more worried about the cgi than the acting for sure I think I don't know where I read it, but I read that um, this is the most uh, Netflix has invested in one of their shows. Yeah, well, the, the, all their sets. Have you seen the set leaks of the pictures and stuff? It's wild. We have we have some pictures up here in the spoiler debate too of um like costumes were posted of all the Marines and stuff like that. Um, yeah, everything looks great, like set wise and all that. I'm just worried about how they're gonna do this CGI, or like even like Arlong. How are you gonna make Arlong look good? That's true. Not crazy. We'll Maybe, see. like in Pirates of the Caribbean, how some of them look, look all right. But even then, I don't know how people felt about Pirates of the Caribbean, like their characters. But and then and then it's like that's a whole other like bracket of money that you have to put into to even make them look like that. On top yeah. of the sets looking as good as they do. Yeah, I just it's a bummer if they cut it because um, I thought personally I thought Cowboy Bebop was pretty good. Like, personally, I thought it was pretty good for what they came for. And then, literally, there's only one more season, and you just cut it? Like, yo. Yeah, well, they, they don't want to They don't want to risk it. They don't want to risk that. And, like, I know that Cowboy did get a lot of hate. I wasn't too big a fan of it, but it, my problem was with his casting. I, I like everyone else's casting. Jet, everyone else. I didn't wasn't a fan of uh, Spike's casting. Oh, you didn't like him? He was all right, but he just, yeah, like, Spike is so, like, swaggy and dope and just like cool and like he i just don't get that vibe from from him as an actor the harold and kumar dude i know that's what i was gonna say harold and kumar like i yeah i don't like i just i love everyone else the world was great the graphics everything i don't really have any problems ayn was ayn um we actually just got the vinyl for cowboy bebop last night it just came in the mail today or yesterday Sick. but right you're right jet i think jet carried that whole show jet carried it hard for sure I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that. Like, yeah. That guy, that guy was doing some damage with the acting and how he was portraying Jet. I was like, yo. I, honestly, I think he was the one who was absolute closest to the character, for sure. Other than Ayn, the dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Arlong Park, easy S tier. Moving off into that, we meet Laboon at Reverse Mountain. And we also meet, I can't remember his name, but the ship doctor for the uh, Roger Pirates. Yeah. Um, fuck. What's his name? I can I can never remember his name. We met him like two times. <laughs> or it's I know cut it has him like two times. Like, I know it has to do something with like bronze because like they got silver. But yeah, um, that arc. Uh, I think I keep thinking about this. I just want to see Laboon again. Oh my! I'm gonna sob honestly when it happens. Like I I can't even hide it. Like just thinking about. Cause I I was I love Brooke like Brooke's probably my top three four favorite Straw Hats so when and he deserves it so much I can't imagine being on a ship for fifty years by yourself just alone. Not only that, but it's like their reunion is going to be the most. I hope they really put in a lot of love into that one, dude. It's dude, it's too crazy. I feel like there's the whole episode for the ending has to be like an hour long thing. No. <laughs> I I heard that we have a the the special episode. I don't know what all you know about, but the special episode coming up in July is rumored to be an hour. Also. That's good. We need that. I need to catch up ASAP. Yeah. Actually, sorry, sirens are playing by. Oh, you're good. Honestly, I only didn't even really pick it up. Oh. Uh, um. Okay. So that's the actually main reason why I'm gonna start One Piece. Like back up, because like once I heard that, um, I know why. 
but that that was coming in July. I was like, oh, dude, I can't, I can't blow this because then when that gets first F goes up, on no one's gonna see. Yeah. It. Everyone's gonna be talking about it. You're not gonna be Every- able to be on the internet at all and not get spoiled. Like it's gonna be impossible. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh yeah. So that that arc, uh, I think that was a it was a B because like it's at the time for for at the time when you're experiencing it it feels like a beat yeah but and you, you don't have don't the context realize, yeah you don't have all these pieces that really make it more than a beat so like it, during the experience but you don't know anything it's a beat you're like all right where are we going next what's the next keep like, moving luffy made a whale friend yeah but after it's just like this knowing context it brings it up because now you're anticipating what's going to happen with these characters when they meet um the the future of the, the crew so i think it's like a an a, a pretty high a for me but it does go from a b to a yeah i definitely agree with that and, it, and honestly once they meet they could even go higher than that once they meet up again dude yeah i agree that's gonna that's where it's gonna take it higher and like that's just like anything that you're watching is like at the moment it can be a certain vibe but then like it all starts clicking and that's what this show does it just makes you start clicking things together as you keep going further yeah the, and the more you it's like it literally will reward you for how much you pay attention because there's so many small details like you can pick up on stuff as early as you want but it's like it's just all about how much you pay attention to it in yeah one piece i agree moving on to that we got little garden we meet uh the giants Usab gets his title uh, the first lie becomes the truth, and um, we also run into broke works. I will time. say, um, I don't really remember much of this one. So for me, I'm just gonna say if I don't really remember it that well, I'm gonna it's a C. Yeah, just to be safe, it's like that neutral state. It's like it's a C. Feel you 100. percent um, and, and honestly, that one feels slow, too. Like, you get the, the Broke Works girl has that paint devil fruit that's just, like, kind of you don't care about. It, and, like, they're in the wax cake. You do meet Bond Clay for the first time as well. And uh, Mr. Three. The um, heroes. The yeah. real heroes. The legends. Bro. Bro. There's too much. We'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> Those arcs. We'll get into that. Um, Whiskey Peak is falling in after that. Uh, we fight the Broke Works. We pick up Vivi. Um, Zoro and Luffy have a little brawl together. And Nami gets sick at the end of that arc. The importance of that arc is is high. And it's just like the fact that my mind just wants to go to Alabasta is gnarly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just goes straight there, right? It, it completely skips it. It's yeah. one thing that caught me off guard too, honestly. When when I first when I went back for my first rewatch, I was like, I completely forgot that it was in between them. Yeah, you see that? I, maybe I need to do a rewatch too. So I'll or probably you be, can bang the movie out too. They got the, they just added the movie to Netflix. I'll probably have to do that. It's definitely worth it. Whiskey Peak, what are you feeling? I'm I'm I gotta go with the C. I can't really speak much of it, much of it since like my mind is blanking it. Feel you. Uh, after that, Nami gets sick. They have to find a doctor, and they go to Drum Island. They're all full snow island. They run into bitch ass Wapo, and um, I remember this for yeah, sure. I remember. I hate this. Wapo so much, <laughs> but we meet Bro. Chopper. I think when I we made it to the island and like we we met Chopper and just like I don't know for some reason like the beginning of of like Chopper. I wasn't getting as I get now from more of like a mysterious character and like you wanted to know more of him and uh, what he was thinking. And it's like they definitely switched his character up after he joined the crew. Yeah. Like, like, they found his like fit for the crew. But in the beginning, you're just like, dude, this guy seems like he's not trying to be friends with nobody. Well, and he like just had no trust in anybody even also. And that's a lot of people don't really like chopper because they feel like he turned into just like a money grab make stuffies and stuff out of him now because he's all cute and lovey now i still i still personally fuck with chopper but yeah definitely back before when uh he had uncontrolled monster point and stuff like that and you just never knew what he was gonna do and he used it he switched through his abilities more he kind of does to use like the same two now but yeah 
I still Chopper's backstory is still so iconic to me with the the good doctor and uh, even the old woman. I can't remember her name. Why can't I remember her name? But the old woman doctor. That, yeah, I know that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis has expressed if they make if they make it to that like bar in the show or series, she would love to play her. Yeah, I, I've been seeing that on Twitter too. Which we should allow that. Like, if there's a celebrity that loves like a character and they kind of resemble them, you might as well. She does. She does resemble. I will give her that for sure. There, I can't remember. There's this other female actress that I thought would really be really good for her too. I can't remember the doctrine's name. Or wasn't that it? Doctrine? Didn't they just call her Doctrine? Mm -hmm. Um. So Drum Island, where are you feeling? Um, uh, we do get introduced to Chopper. Uh, we get the one of the saddest storylines that we had since probably Arlong. Yeah, for just sure. Like, yeah, because like Arlong. It, when I think of that, I just think of like the fight, the squad just lining up, walking to go get into their fight, and then Nami stabbing herself where the tattoo is, and then crying, and then looking at Luffy and saying, "Can you help me?" Yeah, and then it's like he finally jumps in, and like that was sad as fuck. Like that when someone asks for help, that's when you know they're in their lowest. Especially someone like, like that. Like Nami d did not want anyone's help at all in her whole life. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's crazy. I got the chills just because like. I remember just like him put. Oh, we have a little technical issue here. I don't, I'm not getting any audio audio from you this time. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I think I would have to give uh, this one like, it's like close. I want it to be an A, but it's like, you know what? Let's go with A. A tier Just for Drum Island? Yeah, because like you, it is an emotional and you get a new crew member from there. And I think that's important. If you're getting a, crew a new one, just in case Craig timed out, I don't want to okay. fucking. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, Discord's been active fucking crazy for me all morning. I don't know why. It literally wouldn't even let me. Like, normally when I do these, um, you would be able to see the tier list as well. But for some yeah. reason, Discord just will not pull up any of my screens at all. It, it, it was, was a whole thing for me to get my camera to even work. Now recording. Now recording. Thanks, Craig. Okay, sick. All right, everything should be... Oh, wait, Craig just left again. Fuck. I have no clue what's happening. Now recording. All right. Discord. What is good? Hopefully you fucking chill out for me. Thank you. Um, Drum Island, we said was an A tier. We're moving into Alabasta Arc. Bro, this is, this is triple S. Yeah, easy triple S. So much shit happens in here, especially even now. Like, uh, I know you're not manga current, but Alabasta is relevant again now more than ever oh damn it um yeah it's been a whole thing you definitely gotta get, you gotta figure out we're gonna get caught up yeah i gotta get caught up and, and then pick up from the manga at that point to be caught up officially caught up i think that's the move i just gotta be a manga dude now like just I, so I, I you because like i don't want to get spoiled anymore like for anything <clears throat> but yeah. that's why I, got, that's why I got caught up Alabasta is a, a triple S for many reasons. One, we get the Poneglyph. Two, Robin joins the crew. Three, like not a, I don't know if it's official, but she joins. Like yeah. I think that it's definitely point, official. By by the the time it's over. 
Yeah, and then even then, like, she's different at, like, she's different then from where, like, Water 7 hits. Yeah. Her kind of character. So it's, like, really interesting to see the change. And I, I enjoy how Luffy, when he fought Crocodile in here, it's smarts. Like, he use, he, like, figures out how to fight his opponent, which is, I think, really sick because he's not just relying on his powers but he was being strategic at that point um another thing is like ace ace pulls up for that's, the first time yeah yeah and that's a big thing so like it's really sick to see his crew members meet his brother and it's like that interaction is like whoa all or right you you get there's and even just peak comedy too like you get the whole smoker and ace luffy interaction in the bar of yeah, Ace, Ace just passing out with this fucking narcolepsy and just like that. Yeah, Alabasta overall, like story wise, Crocodile's phenomenal antagonist, like probably one of my favorite in the show. Um, uh, yeah, definitely so much happens within this show. I mean, not the show, this this arc that it's really important. It's one of the important ones when you think about it. Yeah, by far. Um. Is there anything you didn't really fuck with about Alabasta? Uh, no, I think everything I really enjoyed, even up to the end, whenever they're saying bye to Vivi, and like you see the the little water water turtles or whatever. I don't yeah. know what you. Yeah, I know like, what you're talking. About. <laughs> yeah, the like karate water turtle things. Yeah, like that was sick. It's just, and their goodbye. It's so cool. Like she knows that they're friends, but. That they just can't let the government know. Yeah, because the government will fucking buster call Alabasta out of pettiness. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, moving off of the triple S into Jaya arc, very short arc, but um, one that a lot of people don't separate. I separate though because we have, uh, why, why am I blanking on his name now today too, um. Luffy fights the one shots the uh, bounce man in the town. Bellamy. Bellamy, yeah, after talking all that shit. Yeah. Actually, this is probably an S for me, for me personally. Like this because I, you just triggered one of the key moment, one of the key things that make it an S for me. This is the first time that Luffy meets Teach. Yeah. And when they give when he gives that speech I have gone to that speech many times when I feel pretty low and it's, it's moving like that. That thing does many things for you. Like you can interpret it how you want, like for real life, not real life, or like even just like to get yourself motivated. But that right there is so powerful for me. Like when teach gives that speech and like Luffy's just looking at him with like a dead eye yeah. and I'm like, let's go, let's go. And it's just like that to me that's one of the most powerful things like there's many speeches that really get to me and it's, yeah in, like, he's so good like at doing in that. anime yeah and in animes and especially one piece does it the most because like it just like has the moments where it's like oh this was supposed to be said here at the sorry get it get it get it it, it left, it left. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> But yeah, um, it's definitely an S for that reason. Plus, like, Luffy was stronger than his, um, because he could have easily, easily took all those people out. Yeah, with with, no with Zoro. Instead, instead they took the pain. Zoro like, was getting ready to smoke him anyway. At, when he first yeah. hit Luffy and Zoro, before he could even flinch, had him fucking had his sword out, but. I understand what Luffy was doing. I definitely appreciate like their uh, commitment to their dream, and definitely the whole thing with Teach. I still think about that line where he says "they." He addresses Teach as "they," like more yeah. than one, because I I'm yeah. I'm really big into the theory that Teach has multiple personalities in him. Dude, and not just that with like his his devil fruit kind of kind of uh, solidifies it because like he can take devil fruits. So yeah. Yeah, it's pretty big. Like that that one's pretty big for me. 100% agree. 
And then nothing's more satisfying than that Bellamy punch at the end of it. Um, moving in off of that into Skypea, we hit the upward stream, and we see probably one of the best. Like I like just world building wise, I love Skypea. Everything about it is so fucking beautiful. The thing about that is like before they even got shot up, like those dark figures, that's crazy to me. The dark, like, the big, tall, dark figures with the red eyes. That's Thriller Bark yeah. that you're thinking of. Yeah. But I agree with you. I just, I literally just posted about that like a day ago on Twitter because of last week's manga chapter. But, um, the, oh my gosh, it's off. Just coming back, it's crazy how like they get shot up into the sky and like, Mary champs it. <laughs> yeah. Teaches a uh, crew, misses it. And it's like, dang, they they made it. It's like, and they didn't. And now they have to wait forever, how long it's going to take to go back up there. Um, and then just like the whole drama going on within the Enel and the Skypeans, it, it, that's its own thing. It's like, yeah. dude, that itself is a not just an arc, but it's a whole like series happening within it, within an arc of the show yeah so there's so many arcs in one piece that you could take out independently and just have that be an anime on its own and it would still be better than 90 percent of everything that's out yeah 100 percent um and i fuck with anel too i really think anel is coming back too but that's i mean everyone pretty much agrees with that so where where are you feeling skype at i think it's um for sure like a double s for me Oh yeah. Oh what the fuck? Um After Skypea, they go into Thriller Bark. Right? No, I'm tripping. It got messed up again somehow. Water seven is next. Uh we meet yeah, Frankie. To... Yeah. I love Frankie so much. Even even before he joined anyone, it was just the Frankie house chilling. Yeah. So how you what are you feeling? Where you where you want to put uh Water Seven at? Water Seven Water Seven's really like it's so pretty. Just when it gets introduced, the world building really keeps expanding in your mind. Because like one, you just Skypea really did that to you. It really expanded on to you, and it feels like. At that point, when you're seeing like episode, like you're in the 100s and you're seeing, uh, oh, I still have like, like this isn't even half of the show. No. This is not halfway. So your mind is automatically thinking, bro, if this was a Sky <laughs> Island already this early on, and then now we're getting a place called Water 7 and like the way it looks, your mind is like starting to develop a new sense of like how the whole series is supposed to look like it's, it's not just yeah um, like adventurous and wild like yeah the the art the artwork designs and the world building designs for this even just having like the random thing of like aqua laguna like this island has this fucking travesty that happens every year and they just yeah. have to deal with it like every island you know had kind of their own like weird thing like sabody got them weird bubbles that are just everywhere for no reason um little garden everything was giant I think Water Seven's like a, a eight for me, an eight. Oh yeah, and then we also get the the reveal of the crew being CP nine. We trusted them and we loved them. Um, leading off that into Annie's lobby, this is a, easily a top three arc for me. Yeah, probably. top top S, Tri the, triple S, the, highest S we yeah, can go. Triple S, triple S, <laughs> right there. There's too much going on, and dude, like thinking back, like I can't believe like I. Uh, like I've made it so far and like with the show and like so many people give up and like, or not just that. It's like so sad to think about this one. Like think about the people that are watching this and died and like, they didn't make it. Yeah, past this. Uh, bro. I worry about that so much more than I probably should have. <laughs> like, I'm not going to make it before one piece ends in the next yeah. five years. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. But we are truly living in one of the best times. Like some of the goatest anime is dropping and then like this anime will be done within like five years or so yeah even when this is done this will be talked about forever one piece will be definitely I, at least my generation i'm making sure for sure um 
I, I know you don't know. We just had a daughter back in December, our first uh, baby. And we exactly. named her. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We named her after One Piece. Um, she is an official D, Anaya D. Kohler. That's legal, just the, just the D. Um, so I'm making sure One Piece is generational for sure. Uh, my kid is definitely going to know about it and watch it. That, um, that's sick. Well, and it's just like it's just such a good like thing like like you said like One Piece has so many like life lessons in it and honestly like I base my morals off of Luffy and like how he acts I don't fuck with any form of oppression or anything like that. Um, obviously, like I love everyone and want everyone to love how they love and fucking that's just how I live my life. And it's like if it doesn't affect me, I don't know why I'm, why I would be upset about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just how Luffy is. He don't fuck with any form of oppression at all, whether it be hunger anything any form of hate none of it um moving off of, well, and yeah andy's lobby is just literally you that's when you first see the extent of how far luffy will actually go for a friend like he straight yeah. up challenged the whole world we get soga king uh not usab i love him i wish he would make a return again <laughs> maybe if there's another uh conflict with both of them yeah what if they have another another war and Usopp just can't like he just can't deal with it, so he has to go back to Soga King to to be in the a part of the war. <laughs> I, I love that. Um, after that, after that arc, Soga King be, has his own like wanted poster. Yeah, we it's we so actually gnarly. have that one. <laughs> it's so gnarly. Um, so yeah, easy triple S here. Everyone gets a power up too in the, in. Uh, and he's lobby. Everyone gets power up. Yeah, um, they do. And then we go back to Water Seven, get a new ship. Uh, we'll just count that in as the Water Seven arc as well, though. Um, moving off of that, they leave Water Seven in their new ship, and accidentally meet Brooke and run into Thriller Bark. Thriller Bark was important because, like, that's where Zoro gets a new sword. Um, they they get a new member, uh, and that's the when tie-in uh, yeah Just, and not only that whenever the end at the end when uh i forgot that guy's name but the, with the pom-pom fruit mm -hmm. uh he he tells Toma. zoro's awake and yeah zoro's awake and he's just like look at this guy's gone through pain like if you don't want me to t take him you have to endure his pain and it's fucking gnarly yeah, just zoro's like, nothing happened it has to be like Probably his most iconic moment, even still in the series. It was insane that that he felt what his captain went through, and then like, he was out for like days. Yeah, and then just like Luffy wakes up, he's like, "Oh, I feel good." Just like nothing happened. He's like, I don't, like, yeah, oh. I don't understand. Yeah, and, so and innocent. They still work to keep the secret because, like, when you when you think about it, like Sanji knows what happened mostly. Uh, well, no, he actually does know because the two guys that saw on accident told Sanji, and then Robin knows too, and no one's ever told anyone about nothing happened. Yeah. Um, and I then we also meet S tier. Yeah, easy, easily up there, and it's peak comedy when he fucking shoves that zombie back into the grave, bro. That will always yeah. forever make me laugh. Um, and we also meet Big Mom's daughter here, unknowingly. Yeah. And learn Which about the uh, the Vivre card. Luffy, they get they get that uh, the first Vivre card from her and Ace's Vivre card back in Alabasta. They get our first exclamation uh, of what they are even there. Um, leaving Thriller Bark, we go into pre time skip Sabudi. A very emotional arc, very hard for the Straw Hats and anybody who watches the show. This was uh, probably this is a triple S for me, bro. And Easily. I say that because, like, whenever uh, Luffy punches the the Celestial Dragon... Oh, my God. Sends him straight back to the manga. The, that was the most satisfying thing I've ever seen, ever. He, yeah, like, literally, because you hate him for so long, like, and he's literally just being such an asshole for absolutely no fucking reason. Like, no one's had less of a reason to be an asshole than, than that one Celestial Dragon. Yeah, that was that was peak moment. When I saw that, I was like so hyped. I was like, I can't describe what's happening to me right now, but that was it. You also and not only that, but 
Go you ahead. see like you see law and kid like yeah hey, that's what i was hey, about to say you, <laughs> you meet all like, the other supernovas here you could see the the uh, well you don't know back then but you know now that uh fucking kid law and luffy are a squad pretty much and uh but it's so funny to see their reaction as he's walking up before he punches yeah. like, hey, uh, hey, he, what he's kidding right yeah law could have left at any point honestly when you think about it we didn't know back then but law could have just roomed the fuck out of there and he, he still yeah. chose to fight Dude, he was so mis- he's still mysterious, but he was so mysterious at that point. I was like, oh, what's going on? And we meet uh Rayleigh also. Yeah, this is a triple S for sure. Too many important things happened in that. So many. Um, but unfortunately all the straw hats get separated and sent off into their own little arcs. Um, I didn't have everyone's arc written down here. I like I didn't put them all in separately. But we got Luffy's on Amazon Lily. Um, how you feel about Amazon Lily meeting Boa? Luffy flashes a whole island. Um, I think uh, this is like, for me, it's is movement. And he not only that, but he meets um, uh, a warlord mm-hmm. that he didn't, she didn't know, and he didn't know. Like, he, I mean, he... I don't want to say he uses her, but, like, the fact that she's willing to go lengths for him after she falls in love with him, I think it's really strong how it just shows in the show, like, the faults of your warlords being, like, these, like, lawless Independent, people. Independent, yeah, can still do whatever yeah. they want, practically. Because, like, after this, it leads into Marine Ford, uh, and it's, like, she does this for him. Like yeah. she did this without her, like, without her, he never makes it to Marine Fort or impel down or none of that. That just yeah. doesn't happen. So, um, this one's like, I think it's a, a, it's pretty high. It's not like close to S tier. Cause like nothing too crazy happens, but oh, her introduction, we her actually, introduction. we get one thing that gets looked over pretty often. Um, Luffy uses conquerors hockey for the first time when the, the snake women, uh, wrap him up the sisters. Yeah. But we don't know that it's Conqueror's Hockey at that point. Yeah, an idea. A little idea of it. No, no, that's that's good because, like, he does use it again, like, in the next two arcs. Yeah. Like, Impel Down is probably tri- triple S for sure. Like, the, the next two arcs are triple S. Yeah, Impel Down goes with Marine Ford. Yeah, I'm I, pu- gonna... I put them both together. Yeah, I don't even separate them because Impel Down and Marine Ford go together for me. Okay, yeah, all right. This is, like, a triple. Dude, this is, like, a, a five S. six. Yeah, five S. <laughs> Because, like, the amount of things that go down. One, Buggy's in there. And it's like, you haven't seen Buggy in a while. Really? So, has like, been a minute. He, and, and then you're, like, seeing him. It's like seeing an old friend again. You smile. You're like, he, oh. He's, like, literally the comedy break you need be, after all of, like, the fucking war and bullshit. Like, an Impel Down was a whole shit show. Yeah, definitely seeing Buggy in them was, like, a relief. Von Clay, all of them. You're just like, oh, thank God someone's here. And Ivanka. Ivanka's iconic, too. Yeah. Um, I think it's really cool. Like, that's when uh, Luffy gives him John's treasure. Yeah. To this day, I'm still, like, wondering what that is, what's going to happen with that. Um, and then just, like, the, the amount of people that he's freeing and then, like, just keeps going down. Just keeps going down. Doesn't even go up. Uh, and then you meet Jimby for the first time there. Yeah. Like, which is like, he knows of Luffy because of Ace. Yeah, a and former like, warlord. All these, all these connections are like just making a lot of sense, and like, just you appreciate it. like it's so like stepping back, like the amount of like connections that are being made. This is like so hard to do. Yeah, continuously, even for. Like, like, a lot of animes can't even make this many connections at, at all, the entire anime, let alone putting 500 episodes in between the connections and still doing it perfectly. Yeah, and it, it just feels like a real-life thing, like, that's happening. It's like, you're like, oh, you know so-and-so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And <laughs> even, like, with Louis, uh, Luffy being on verge of dying because of the poison, because of the warden, and then, like, uh, Ivanka's like, this is going to shorten his life. And it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, like, he, we need him to be good. And every time, like, throughout this, I remember throughout this arc, I was just thinking, bro, 
he literally has no energy and he's pushing like he's still pushing uh and then they get on the boat and then yeah just and then it gets even worse <laughs> than it was <laughs> it gets even worse someone someone does the ultimate sacrifice and stays behind and it's like bro so emotional and that's not even the like that's just the build-up for the beginning of the next well, and and, the, like, and that's also not even like because blackbeard is also in there collecting his crew in the mayhem yeah. like yeah. breaking out new people M- magellan is a fucking busted ass antagonist like his devil fruit is so broken so good for being a warden of a prison um going into marine ford like so it, it gets so much more out of hand and you don't even expect it to because you're you're coming off of an already intense as fuck arc and then yeah Whitebeard just absolutely blows everyone's expectations out of the water because it's like when you first meet him with shanks he's like on a ventilator and can barely do anything and it looks like he just wants peace he's not trying to like start anything but then he pulls up that happens and not only that he just yells the one piece is real yeah like you send Goku's face, like, bro. The literal that's... worst things he could possibly say, like, re-inspiring more people than ever before, because that's that's kind of what pushes Bartolomeo out to the sea. Yeah, not only that, it's just like, um, everyone like this one the second time he uses Conqueror Saki, and then all, everyone there was like, oh, bro, he's that strong. Yeah, they didn't know about it then they like that just causes like um kizaru just rushes to him like r.i.p to the voice actor but yeah he just rushes to him and it's like that's when you know things are getting too real like when the admirals are, yeah, are stressed after, yeah they're after you like they could fight anybody else but now they are after you and they've, they've been you. sitting there cross-legged chilling for the whole war while white beer was acting up they didn't give a fuck yeah. about that really except uh a co- our boy Akoji froze the, the oceans, the tsunamis, but that was about it. Bro, number two comes in clutch at the top. Yes, bro. So much more. I didn't even think about him, honestly. Like, until literally Luffy already made it up there. I was like, yeah. damn, okay. He pulled like, it the, off. The, yeah, the amount, everyone's small role had a big role in Luffy's uh, just... Freeing. His whole mission in freeing Ace. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we know what happens, but Ace is a little too prideful. Won't let uh anyone talk shit. I don't blame him either. I mean, he was talking, he was talking wild on Whitebeard, and Ace wasn't about to let that happen. So, um, yeah. And and also, Ace was just had a had a like one of those problems where he's too strong for his own good. He had to be taken out early. You know what I mean? Like. If if Ace was in the New World and learned hockey on top of his already busted ass devil fruit that he had like perfect control over, Ace would be king of the pirates. Yeah, it, it honestly would have. It, but I think this is the first time in an anime that uh, such a big character got killed off, and you didn't want like you legit didn't like you're like why did you do that? Like, yeah, why? They were and, so and close. Like, we just spent a hundred episodes getting you out of here. Yeah, it, but I appreciate that because he kept it real. Yeah, like, he kept it real. Yeah, Ace like, would never let Ace would never let someone badmouth Whitebeard, no matter what. So like, he yeah. stuck to his character for sure. Man, as much as it sucks. Yeah, and then Luffy holding him and begging Ivanka to give him the steroid shots in hopes that would do anything when it's like a whole hole blown in him is so fucking sad, bro. And then it's just him crying, and it's like his his crying just did it. Yeah, that's when you know it's like there's nothing we can do. And he was just broken after that. Shout out Jinbei. Jinbei got them off the fight, and Law got them out of that situation. But Luffy was would have just died there if it wasn't for Jinbei and Law. Died, prisoner. Who knows? Oh no, he. If, I'm pretty sure Lava Boy was trying to kill everybody on the island. He did not give a fuck. He was trying to kill Marines. Akinu did not care about nobody. Yeah, he's... Kobe. We got Shanks Man. Intervention. Yeah, Marine for his easy S tier. Triple S. Um, after that, though, he gets the crew back together. We get the crossed out two days, uh, two years. And um, we get post-Sabudi. 
So I did make that one its own separate thing. They come back, they all reunite. Probably one of my, also my favorite pieces of One Piece. Watching them all reunite after so long. Dude, it's gnarly that they reunited like so long. Like two years is a long time. Pretty... Like they were only together on the boat for like four four to six months together before the time skip. Yeah, which is insane that they would choose two years. Yeah. But two years was enough for everything to change. I wonder if Rayleigh gave him that time. Like what made him pick two years? Is that just how long Rayleigh was like, I need at least this much time to get you ready? Yeah. It, maybe it that's what it was honestly because like Rayleigh he's a wise person and he knows probably he wanted to understand Luffy more and I'm pretty sure he knows like uh at that point like within the training I'm pretty sure he learned more about Luffy and his devil fruit because like I think it was around um I want to say Wano like where he has a flashback of Rayleigh talking about like the extent of his powers, but mm-hmm. he doesn't say anything. And, and that always left me wondering what it was, but. Well, I mean, we know that Rayleigh, Rayleigh's, we know that he's read the last Ponting glyph. He's been to Laugh Tale. So he knows. Oh, yeah, I, do, I do appreciate when he's like, do you guys want to know what the one piece is? I'll tell you right now. Yeah. And, and then, <laughs> Usopp's dumbass. Usopp's, yeah. He's like, yeah, tell me <laughs> like, and then every Luffy's like, no, we're gonna find out. Yeah, he's like, bro, relax. The fuck is spoil everything? Usab. I love Rayleigh too, and that's crazy to think about. He spent two years with Rayleigh, and six months with his crew. So he spent four, like four times the amount of time with Rayleigh than anyone else on the crew. But I think that was important because, like, lead, moving on, you kind of could see like, um, the benefits of that. Yeah. Um, so moving after, or where, where do you want to put, uh, post Sabudi, the reunite? Um, I'll, I'll put an A. It's cause it's nice to see them all together. Yeah. It's very heartwarming. After all that bullshit, we just went through and Marine Ford and Impel Down and finally some joy. Yeah. Um, after that, we go to Punk Hazard. We meet Caesar. We find out that this is the island that, uh, Okoji and Akiyanu had their battle and awoken their devil fruits on. Um, Caesar is a super annoying antagonist to me, but very important. Before we go to Punk Hazard, I think we go to like that underwater uh, island with oh Fishman. Fishman's before Punk Punk Hazard. Okay, Fishman Island first. I had them. I had them all organized perfectly, and then it exited out of it. It reset everything, and I had to do it on like the fly real quick. Shit. But uh, yeah, Fishman Island. I have them all here though. So we got we still got Fishman Island um yeah they do get their oh yeah you're right because they coat the ship and go underwater right away they code this uh fucking he codes it for them really um uh, i i think the that one's to me it's a b because like it's just like all right you brought me back from two years and you're taking me here it's not that exciting but it's like you're warming me up for the future yeah, yeah you're, you're you're getting me acquainted with the crew after two years like this is the first thing this is their flex arc for sure yeah it definitely, ooh, it definitely showing off it. the whole thing was just them they did not struggle at all horty had to take like mad testosterone to even be able to fight fucking luffy not only that but the message big mom sent like, yeah and and they're like they sent a bomb back like what the on fuck? accident <laughs> that, that's them for sure flexing bro and then luffy claims that as his territory like nobody better fuck with that like or else on the phone uh, I think one of the coolest things there was like when humans giving blood to fishmen or the uh, vice versa, like like the yeah. first transfusion of blood, and From Jim that was a big deal for them because like Neptune's wife wanted like fishmen and humans to live in harmony. So I think it was like nicely done. Like I said, it's just like this was a nice episode. It was a heartwarming thing to see uh, them all together, but it wasn't like. Overall, for the arching story, yes, it did move drama with Big Mom forward, but it could have done that in Punk Hazard. Yeah, so. that's why I said that's why I look at I literally look at this whole arc is just for them to flex. The only real importance is um, uh, Shirohoshi being Poseidon. You find out about the ancient weapon, and um, yep. 
Sanji, you, you get that episode where Sanji just almost bleeds to death because he couldn't handle yeah. being with the, the uh, other women for two years. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is just such, such... You also get the first Red Hawk. The first canon Red Hawk is in uh, Fishman, and you get uh, first that elephant Gatlin with the armor, arm net hockey. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely do like that arc. Uh, going off that into Punk Hazard, I already gave the rundown for that because I fucked up. Um, what are you feeling about Punk Hazard and Caesar? Caesar was, dude. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Punk Hazard. As I was closing in, like binging, and I was getting here, I was like, "Yo, this is getting crazy." Like, I, I need to hurry up. It's like I don't know what this is, and that's what sucks. Like when you get to binge things, you just want to hurry up more yeah. and more. <laughs> For sure. And, like, Punk Hazard is, is very slow for the first, like, until they really get inside the factory, it's pretty fucking slow. Of them, like, yeah. they meet they meet Kinemon, they kill that dragon, uh, and then they meet Momonosuke later on, which you find out is super fucking important. But I honestly didn't even really like them at first, either. Momonosuke yeah. and Kinemon. Yeah, I didn't really understand their... And that's what, I guess that's the beauty of, like, the further you go and you learn. Like, I didn't really understand their importance. I was like, ah, oh, these fucking guys. Like, yeah. come on, man. What's this have to do with the story? Yeah. I was like, I guess this that's the question. This joke samurai and this child who just cries all the time. Yeah. But it's, they're, every, it, it just kind of like, now that you're really putting it down, it's like, I guess it really emphasizes that everyone is important in life. Yeah. Like, Literally, yeah. Like, so true. Like, because... I'm sure this has happened in life, like where you're like, fuck, who the hell is this? Like, I ain't even trying to talk to you right now. And then like, the, like you befriend them and then like, oh shit, this person's actually yeah, kind of important. This is my best like, fucking they, friend now. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I guess that's another thing that like now talking to you, realizing that is like, everyone's important. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. everyone is just important. Just in passing. Like yeah. the, the smallest character could come back. There's still people who believe that, um, you remember, uh, like Gabumon, the dude in the chest with the green yeah. afro. There's people who yeah. still think he's gonna come back and and could be relevant. And it's like you literally just don't know with One Piece. Everyone could be relevant. Everyone probably is relevant. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, yeah, Punk Hazard was cool. I think Punk Hazard also explains Law's backstory. Or no, 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 Law's backstory. But then it was Just Rosa that they explain Law and um do flamingo's brother's backstory yeah. so okay i think it was sick to learn about law's backstory because like to be honest law is one of my favorite characters just like his whole demeanor and how he goes about things i, I really appreciate it and his, his just his crew's interesting yeah but that backstory was key for me because like it just was like i didn't know him and I always kept thinking, like, who, well, who is this guy? We, like, get backstories all the time, and you're just, like, kind of passing him by. And then, bam, finally got it. And it's, like, there's a reason why he is who he is. And it's, like, he, he wants to save people because, like, he couldn't save his village or yeah. the people from the disease. And also, very fucked backstory. Like, overall, just everybody in One Piece. Laws is, like, up there, top five most fucked up backstory. Yeah. 100%. I agree. Um, you also, this is where they form the Alliance, the final, uh, the Alliance take down Kaido is the ultimate yeah. goal. Um, and you, you get to see Law flex real fucking hard when he cuts that whole mountain in half during his fight with Virgo, getting his revenge for, uh, Corazon, Rip Corazon. Yeah, man. Like I said, that, that backstory was sad to see. And like, going into a, a dress rosa before they before half the crew split to go to whole cake mm. uh it's crazy that dress rosa was like almost 100 eps it's it's more than that they actually it's like 140 i think 130 yeah it's up there. yeah it's, it's crazy that that's how much it took and then like i remember when uh luffy went gear four the internet like it felt like the internet was going crazy yeah it just broke I remember I lost my mind. I was watching weekly at that point, and it was fucking brutal to sit there and wait a week after that. Yeah. Yeah, it's 116 episodes. Total. Yeah, that's, 
That's fucked. Um, so where are you feeling for Punk Hazard? Punk Hazard? Ranking wise? Probably like, like a B. Feel it. And then Dress Rosa. Uh, we, like you said, we moved into Dress Rosa. We got Corazon. We got Law's backstory. Doflamingo. Probably the best antagonist in all of One Piece. Definitely, I think, me and Isabel's oh. favorite. Well, Katakuri's up there too, but Doflamingo is not friendly at all. Bro, his his speech at the end when he's it's over, that's what really Yeah, when he's up. captured, bro, and locked up. Oof, it's menacing it's, as fuck. It's a S tier, not a triple, but it's just a S. Um there's something about that whole and that that's when Sabu gets introduced. Yep, we get the right flare there. flare fruit. There's so much shit that happens. We meet Fujitora. Um the yeah. straw hat fleet is formed. Usab becomes God Usab. The bird cage is a terrifying ability. I do feel bad. Like their their whole kingdom got so fucked by Doflamingo. Like him taking control of people, turning them into puppets, controlling them with his strings, making the king execute his own people like that. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. Dude, um, crazy. Even you get uh, Doflamingo's uh, backstory in there. Yeah, you find out he's a celestial dragon. Was. Yeah. I can't wait. I know he's not done for sure. I'm surprised yeah, he's, he's even done. been locked up for as long as he's been locked up, but he's down there training or something. He's learning something. Yeah, he's chilling. Um, Moving off of that into Dressrosa, they leave finally, and uh, we run into Zhao. Zonisha. A very short arc. Like 30 episodes. Short arc, but really good. Yeah, I think very important. For me, that's, that's an A. That's an A. A tier. Um, and obviously, Sanji gets kidnapped and taken against his, well, mildly against his will to Whole Cake Island, where he has to marry someone who actually wasn't uh, ugly like we thought they were going to be. Um, he meets yeah. Pudding. She's still a demon, unfortunately, but uh, Whole Cake Island, how you feel? Luffy eats an entire town like as soon as he shows the fuck up. He's hungry. Is it expected? Yeah, like, I don't know what the fuck they thought was good. That was the only thing that was going to (laughs) happen. Like, as soon as I Uh, saw the whole thing was chocolate, I was like, it's a wrap. Whole Cake Island was definitely, like, an S tier for me. Um, That's where Sanji and Luffy, like, Luffy just takes his punches. Yeah. Well, crazy. You you meet Cracker. Which was... Uh, honestly like uh, probably my most overlooked fight because of the the form he uses the gear four ta- tank man is that what it, that one is? is that what he calls that one snake man tank man where he like gets all big and fucking fat he he goes snake man with katakuri which makes i love that katakuri and luffy fight is probably one of our favorites for sure um yeah th- that mode i didn't expect that mode but it either. was sick um yeah you just fighting the their commanders um learning about the mirror world was really dope uh just like the whole, man he's really good at world building that's all i gotta really say like, he, he like doesn't even have to try yeah he's it's on lock for him and he and like he's constantly just going back and rewriting like if we, if it hasn't reached the anime yet or he or is he just going back and rewriting yeah um yeah i think big mom we we learn a lot about her we get to see jimbei pretty much tell big mom she's not shit and that he's leaving and joining the straw hats when he stands up to her i love that so much and she can't take his life because he's like why would i fear you yeah yeah jimbei is such a fucking real one and Mm -hmm. i love that before before he joins the crew he's like i'll be back he 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 over any of the other straw hats, more proved himself than anybody else bef- before joining the crew. You know what I mean? Like he literally saved him from Marine Ford. He held Big Mom out by himself there in the water to let them escape to Wano. Like, yeah. And and still came back alive, like he said. He saved them at Wano. Like he Jimbei has been clutching up more than anyone else in the entire fucking maybe Brooke might be the only other one. But Yeah. There's, yeah, Whole Cake Island, it was, I didn't feel like it dragged on. I felt like it was really good. It was good and entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I do think, um, because like going back to Dress Rosa, I felt like that one dragged on more than Whole Cake. I felt like Whole Cake just kind of went by quicker. I agree. Because like you had so much to follow and information already built up, and then it, yeah, it's it's an S for me. It was a good story, like a arc, and it just prepared us for what was coming next. For sure, and. Honestly, Sanji is so fucking lucky that Zoro wasn't there to see all that bullshit. Because I don't know how no one snitched. I don't know how no one told Zoro about the fuck shit Sanji was doing. But yeah, that shit would not have bode well for the. Not only that, but you get Sanji's backstory with his mom and his family, which yeah, I think was was really important for us to know. Yeah. Yeah, it's so much worse than you thought too. Like I was completely fine accepting that Sanji's backstory was that he was on a ship. They got washed up on the ship with a uh, black leg and that like that was his backstory. I didn't even think that there was more than that until whole cake Island. But yeah. Fuck the, uh, fuck the whole Jerma crew. I hate them. That whole family, except the sister. Um, moving off that, we get into another very short arc, probably one of the shortest arcs of one piece, the revere. Yeah. I did not know that I would like this arc as much as I did. Especially when I read this in the manga, I like kind of went through it pretty fast, but then when it was animated, like this shit blew me away in the anime. The drama, bro. Yeah, big drama. Yeah. And you see Kuma getting walked around by the <sighs> Celestials. The fucking disrespect. Like the last Dude, three Celestials and you this... wanna fuck see either. You also learn that uh Kuma and uh Bonnie that's like, what is that? Her her dad? Yeah, it's her dad. Crazy. That which get, makes you wonder, how old is Bonnie? I'm, I'm telling you, you gotta get manga current. That's it's a big oh, point right God. now. It's a real big point right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll hop on. I'll hop on. Trust. Let me just catch up on that apps. I'll probably do like a good four today, honestly. Hell yeah. And and I'll just build the momentum. I'm definitely doing it for sure. Keep pushing. I'll give you the Sam's yeah. Awana roll in the Discord. I'll check in and see where you're at every now and then. Yeah, please, uh, please. What that's what we like to do. The Discord, we like to keep everyone motivated. Keep we got a lot of people going through it right now, too. Probably four or five people watching it right now. We just had two people get caught up. So um so the Revere, where are you feeling? I think that's an S for the drama. Especially we even we had, we actually just got more information on revere and the events of the revere also so once you get and that Sabo, Sabo shows up yeah yeah they're all there Yo. there's like a full like four or five man squad of the revolutionary army there that's what i'm saying it's like it's drama like i i love that like it's a break away from the crew but it's still relevant yeah, i love it so much dude honestly it's crazy because the past two months in the manga we have not had anyone in the crew we've been away from the straw hats for two months that's fucked. Yeah, so it's been we're all about lore piece right now. Everything is all lore right now. And then moving into the final thing, I've been waiting on the sands of Wano forever. Wano. I haven't made it past 117, but you, making it to roof piece. I made it to bro, roof. 1015. <laughs> yeah. Made it to roof piece. Everything built up to that was great. It's been fantastic. Like like just the amount of fights that I just kept seeing and the things that I want to see like oh my gosh that old man that helped Luffy out with the fucking Yakuza tattoos like just seeing him talking to Luffy just like bro he's in prison like you don't expect one of your favorite characters to be in prison yeah and just like he has to break out there's uh, like I'm also I'm such a firm believer that Odin's 15 episode backstory is better than every single like one season anime ever. Like Odin's yeah. backstory hits so fucking hard. He's like the most iconic character in One Piece to not even be in the show at all. You know what I mean? It hurt. It hurt to see that he made a deal with Kaido and the whole thing was like you dance. Yeah. Like a Like literally Odin could have took him out. Like, if they had fought there. That. And th- that was the thing that was so disrespectful. Is like, afterwards, when, after the whole dancing thing happens, Kaido even says himself that if Odin would have attacked them back then, he probably wouldn't have been able to... Kaido wouldn't have won. Yeah. And it's like... 
But it's like, you can't blame him, you know what I mean? He just didn't want to fucking go to war. He didn't, And he also had a problem with trusting his team. If, if him and the Scabbards would have pulled up, as even as weak as they were back then, he just wanted to do everything by himself, which... Yeah, he did. That's not the way. So where are we but feeling yeah. with Wano? Dude, it's definitely like a, a triple S. And I know it's only going to get better like as I move continuing Wano, so... I'm saying this because, like, the big thing, I already know what the big thing is. So, like, it's definitely an S, triple S. That I gotta be, bro. <laughs> and even just, like, you'll see when you catch one of the anime, like, the past three, four weeks of the anime even has also been insane. Like, internet-breakingly insane. Um, There's one other arc on here that I left here. I always leave it for last because it is the least important arc in One Piece. Um... But everyone gets mad if I don't bring it up. I get I get bitched at if I don't bring it up. So the uh, Foxy Pirate arc. I fucking forgot. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, no one does. No one cares about this arc, bro. <laughs> I just get in trouble if I don't put is, it in there. But is this whenever they do like uh the small mini games? Yeah, the and island? and they just be cheating the whole fucking time. Yeah, the Foxy Pirates oh. just cheat the whole time, and they like take Chopper away from them yeah. and take okay, Robin. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I figured that that was one was like um i think it was fun I, I guess you could consider that being filler for one piece even though just, that's what it's, that's the crazy thing is it's not filler it's know, actually in the why, manga no that's why it's like i guess you can consider yeah. it quote unquote their filler yeah versus like you watch naruto and there's shit nothing involved with like the story yeah and I just, dude, I, the cheating thing made me so mad. I just wanted the straw to win the whole time. And then they would just cheat. And Luffy, they're, Luffy's like, well, I can't do anything about that. And I'm like, bruh. Yeah. But that is it. We are the whole way caught up. We went through all of the arcs and ranked all of them. Um, The triple S's. I definitely, honestly, I pretty much agree with everything on, on your arc, really. I would move maybe Fishman up one, and that's probably it. Everything else looks good to me, but that's just because I love the flex. I love the flex arc so much. Yeah, um, they I do be seeing flexing, shit on them. Because like sometimes you know, like you go in Alabasta, Luffy gets beat by Crocodile three times before mm -hmm. he beats it. So it was nice to see him just go in and everyone just beat the shit out of Horty, and Horty just yeah. kept taking fucking more steroids <laughs> to deal with it. Um, but bro, I appreciate you coming on more than I can even fucking say uh manuel sure. mowgli herrera obviously feel free to take whatever time you want here at the end plug anything you want i know we got i've been voting for the tony hawk thing bro we're trying oh. to get you tony we're trying to get you meet him skate with him uh, that would be dope you know that would be epic to you, make a video with me are you still second right yeah i'm still second i'm probably gonna make a youtube video coming on like sometime today or tomorrow and then just like uh, it'll be like more skate related but i'll probably be talking about it and just hopefully i could get more people to be on board there i think there's gonna be like apparently it's supposed to run until like july yeah. and this next round is like just eliminating anyone that's not in the top 10 and i'm pretty sure the next one's eliminating anyone that's not in the top five and then so on yeah so uh it's going by week by week but i'm still last i mean i'm still second and i'm pretty sure uh, a friend of mine was saying, like, since you can buy votes and the person that's in first, he probably got his parents to buy votes, which is fine. Like, I don't is really care. Is it just care. some random person? It's, like, not even a... No, it's it's like a skater. I think oh, from okay. San Diego. Yeah, but... I didn't see the, the list. I just saw... I had watched your video where you, you said about you being second. Currently. Yeah. But it, I think... Eh, I, I'm good. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I just need to make the stuff happen, you know? Yeah. Well, well, I'll make sure all the links and everything are definitely in here. I know you got your YouTube channel. You skate, post a lot of skate content, and obviously like 95% skate. It was probably nice getting to do something that wasn't skateboarding content for once. You know, is this your first like One Piece content ever? Yeah, uh, yeah, honestly. Um, I do have like another channel that's not about skateboarding. It's just called Mowgli Does, and that one's more of like idea-based and uh, just a break away from like skate content just okay. because like i also really like and i enjoy making content in general so i want to be able to uh gather an audience that has nothing to do with skating because like 
after a while people that grow up you know just like they leave skating so it's like it would be really cool to make content that's not skating to appeal to a broader audience yeah yeah i understand what you mean like we we do mainly anime here at the summit like probably 60 percent anime but we still talk about video games everything like when we do the streams and stuff it's just whatever like i'm a chef i actually have a degree so i actually do cooking streams and stuff sometimes too like yeah i just like same thing like just have a little bit of everything for everybody to enjoy yeah. content wise i feel you um i'll but definitely yeah, make sure to have all the links there for that in the description like, there's definitely a lot of good anime out there like i was saying i don't know uh what's the the point where um like if this is just for one piece but there's so many good anime out yeah. there just like one piece like oh man steins gate that's like a so like many fun bangers i know there's a lot of animes out there like just like we were saying villain saga i'm talking about villain saga because like that's one that's going on currently and i feel like a lot of people should watch it yeah uh, also uh did you see blue lock yeah blue lock bro blue lock is fuck <laughs> blue lock uh i just also finished kuroko basketball i was like went on a little blue lock sent me into a little sports binge for a little bit so yo Blue Lock is so fucked because it's different than any other, like, sports anime. Just because, like, the main character is, like, figuring out how he can get better. And it's, like, he's just saying, like, it, it's fucked. It's, like, the ego. The ego is really I, I like that character ego a lot. Yeah. Like, the, even him yeah, running it. Yeah. But, yeah, man, like, hit me up in the messages. It'll, if you ever have, like, animes you recommend I should watch. And oh, I can for sure, bro. If you if you ever want to come back on too, I know this was a Sands of Wano episode, but we do regular episodes where we just talk all animes, like just whatever the fuck we feel like. If you ever want to come back on, dude, just let me know, message me. You're in the Discord now, so whatever. Whenever you're free, we can do a podcast again. For get, sure. get your recommendations, I'll, I'll, your tops. Bro, I have a list. It's crazy. But I'm down. Um, uh but thank you for coming on, bro. I appreciate you. Is there anything, any last words or anything you wanna wanna leave us with? I'll hit you up whenever I'm caught up. All right, I'm I'm holding you to it. I'll definitely be on it. Everyone knows. Yeah. Everyone knows in the Discord. Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll definitely. Like I said, I'm gonna catch up, even if it's like one a day or two a day. I'll be up there because like I cannot get to July and that episode. Even if you did one a day, you would still catch up before that episode. So. I just want to be ahead for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely don't want to be behind when that one drops, but thank you for everyone that comes, came up to the summit. Thanks for everyone that's chilling in the stream and everyone listening on the audio only version. I appreciate you all. Uh, be safe traveling down the summit again. Thank you, Manuel Mowgli Herrera. Everyone check out his content in the description below. Thank you. Peace.